Now, what is that, Tony? Female. This is a female. You got the bigger hole back here, and it's, it's more rounded. So and she has an egg. Well, that, that would be a good hint right there. I don't have my glasses on there. I'm like, sure. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the farm. Uh, today, we're going to check a fish called Synodonis multipunctatus. It has several names. Cuckoo breeder, cuckoo squeaker. Um, what this fish does in the in the lake is from Lake Tanganyika. Um, the males and females are hanging out all the time on these Synodonis cats, and as soon as uh, their host species, and they use many host species, one of their main ones is, is uh, hap, uh, horii or Tinochromus, Tinochromus horii, and they come in there, and as the other fish are spawning, they get in there and they spawn, they lay their eggs. And the thing, the reason they're called cuckoos, just like the cuckoo bird, is that the eggs of the uh, multifunctatus are gonna hatch way ahead of the other eggs. And as soon as they do, they're gonna attach to the eggs in the mouth, and so the Cynodonis is actually letting these other fish incubate and take care of their fish. So when Tony, Tony does this, you've mentioned, heard me mention Tony, this is one of his fish. We do not breed these with uh, the Horii. We breed them with um, Otter Jakes. And that's just a lot of care from Lake Malawi. It's not even a tank meat fish, but it does not matter what is the host fish, just the fact that we've got the uh, multi-cats in here. What we have in here there's a, probably a, a five or six inch or four inch pipe. All the cats are in there. And when these uh, uh, otters start breeding, they're gonna come roaring out of there, get amongst them, lay their eggs, and they're gonna pick them up. So Tony's gonna go through this. I don't do these fish, I've never, I've watched Tony do them. One of the reasons it's kind of difficult is because the multi-cats are real, they're, as soon as you get caught, they're gonna take their uh, fins and put them out, their dorsal fin, their, their, all their fins, and they get stuck up in the net. But Tony has done this so long, he knows how to do it. So he's gonna go ahead and do this first tank here. We're gonna do three tanks of these guys. And go ahead, Tony. <laughs> and so what, uh, most of the of the Alana Cara right now are outside of the actual, they don't, they'll, they'll go into that pipe, but normally they do not go in there. They just hang out out here. But now they're going in because they're obviously, um, get chased for the net. Now, Tony brings them up. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Tony, you take the Synodotic cats out immediately. Yes. And he's just gonna hand these guys out. So in that pipe um, are all the multi-cat breeders. Now, Tony, what do you have in here, ratio male to females? I have... On, on the multi-cats. On the multi-cats, one male to four females. And and it doesn't really matter on the Alana Cara, right? You're just kinda... No. Hey, sorry about that, but uh, they're working on our uh, uh, generator over there, which we lost in a lightning strike. So he was cutting something of metal, so we, you couldn't hear us. But Tony sex, here's how he sex him. Um, he, he bends him down. Now, what is that, Tony? Female. That's a female. You got the bigger hole back here, and it's, it's more rounded. So and she has an egg. Well, that, that would be a good hint right there. I don't have my glasses on there. I'm like, sure. Female. Well, he finds a male, it'll show it to you. The male just has a little spike coming out, correct? Yes. Female. But they, they come out here, I mean, they're, you can see they're really spiny. Um, oh, this is a male. He's starting that up again over there. Um, anyway, I'll talk louder. Maybe you'll be able to hear it. But um, these are probably F1s, Tony? Yes. We have some wild here. We, we've got a bunch of babies that we grew up. Everybody used those for breeders. But these, we we sell a lot of these guys. That they 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 grow unbelievable. I'll take you in the warehouse in a while and show them to you um, how they do. But um, they grow like crazy. And, and Tony feeds them a tremendous amount of food every day and takes it out every morning. She's got a big old mouthful. So so I think. Now, the, the, the baby, if they're baby cats, they're very, very teeny. But you can see them down there. See the, see the, 
the little um, the fat head fat head with the little tails swiveling around. Those are all cats, and there's no there's no eggs left over. These are babies. Just yeah, you, can, you can throw them. There's there nothing there. No, there's baby cats in there. Oh, now, in this one, you'll see the little yellow specks in there. The little teeny. Those are those are the catfish. Holy mackerel! But I'm gonna. What Tony's figured out is if we don't put a little nano in here right now, these guys will start catching on. To the, they, you know, they'll nail each other. They don't just come after them. Yikes. So there they are. They're a little bit more advanced. And let me have put a little nano in there. Because they will start cannibalizing themselves. That's funny that there's not any babies left in here. Do you see that often, Tony? Where yep. There's absolutely no fry no, left? Only the teeny babies have, have egg. Have the other fish's egg in Do them. you think that they're actually eating on each other? In the mouth, or are they when not? They, when, they, when all the other baby eggs are gone, yes. Yep. So they'll they'll go after each other. So Tony, tell us about the three different buckets here with the different sizes. Just we separate them into three different sizes so they don't kill each other. That yeah, looks like them. Yeah. Once I get inside, I'll even separate them even more. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not mistaken, these guys are going to be, yeah, I, I see where you're going to have to separate these. These guys are going to have, um, they'll be eating brine shrimp for a while, Tony, or just straight nano? Straight nano. And they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be sellable in probably two or three weeks, aren't they, the way these things grow? About they're three, pigs. three weeks. They're pigs. But even now, you can see the bigger ones, they are chasing after like if you look right there there's this one the smaller one more more opaque now you see the other dark ones they're 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 coming after them they're they're mean not mean but this is what they do i can't slide them for it but um let me move this we're gonna move down one and do another tank i got it what are you do where are you going to the other tank Oh, the other tanks are over here. No. You want to grab that piece of wood? I don't need it. Oh, okay. Never mind. So we're, we have about how many tanks in this one? These are the bigger ones. These are the wee ones. Fifteen? We have thirteen. Thirteen. This, these are the teeny wee. And the reason we have so many, we used to breed these, I think, in a eight by eight by eight. And production wasn't just wasn't there. So we moved these up to a, a 13 of these 800 gallon balls. It's taken up a lot of room, but I, we moved these fish uh, by the hundred, which is great. The, the what? The spawning gone up like from under a hundred every two weeks. To like 300. Right now it's happening? Yeah. This time of year? Yeah. Very weird. So one of the reasons yeah. we do it with these Alana Caras is that these uh, peacocks just don't stop breeding. Half stop breeding uh, probably about now. If you went out and looked at some of our hat breeders, the males have lost color and they're just not breeding. But these peacocks all over the farm continue to breed. So that's why we chose this peacock. And it really, you know, it doesn't matter what peacock we use. It, it's just a peacock. These could be regals, they could be whatever. It's oftentimes, um, by the time we finish growing these guys up, there'll be babies that, of these peacocks that made it and we'll just put them out to grow up. But we're not necessarily counting on that. But the, our production on these is, is amazing. I mean, and, and I imagine in a tank when these things are doing this, it's probably a really, really cool sight to watch them swoop in there and and do their thing. Little teen weenies. Gosh, those are really big. Yeah. Will they go after those other ones? Might as well just food go. Pick them out when they get inside. So they just does uh, spit out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So those are those are nice size. But those, I'm telling you, those are not that old. They're 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 eating the nano right now. They're not eating the babies. 
but I'll show you some fish inside. And what's amazing about this stuff inside is we usually put them with um, with uh, a flower pot with a hole cut in them. And we'll sometimes put three or four flower pots in the tank with them so that they can, um, they can spawn. I mean, they can hang out in there and they'll go into one pipe. There'll be 150, 200, 300 of them in one pipe. And I don't know why they don't stick each other, but they never do. But they sure can, they can stick when you're messing with them and counting them. Sometimes your hand will feel like it's been stabbed, like a bee sting. It's not really bad. It's not. It is bad? It's bad. Well, I, I don't it have. It hurts any, for days. I don't have trouble with bees. I mean, bees. Mm -hmm. so I'd rather really get bit by a wasp than be poked by one of these things. Well, I use bees on my carpal tunnel. Remember when I had Erica running out and getting bees from the <laughs> stick on my wrists? And it worked. I had carpal tunnel, and I did bees for about two months. A bee, a beehive guy was here taking bees off the farm. He said, hey, go get stung by the bees and make sure the joints in your hand fire up. And they did. So you got these big whoppers in there, but I'm going to put some more nano in there because, well, they've eaten most of the nano up. Whoa. Let me grab it. But these are... So again, in here, there's several different sizes. You, you, so you probably split up these things two or three ways, right, Tony? Four ways after I get in the warehouse. And it's kind of amazing because there's a couple of little eggs in here, and they're, they're laying all over them to get at the eggs. And they're really not bothering each other, but some of them are into the, into the nano. These big guys are into the nano huge. I mean, they're, they're eating it up. Let's go do this next thing. This is uh, his third tank over here that we're going to do. He's done 10, 10 other ones earlier today. We did, there was no reason to show you 10 times doing this. But, um, and like I said, how you do these every two weeks? Every two weeks. Every two weeks, these are getting done. See, I don't know about this because these aren't my fish, so I don't have to know. And unfortunately, Tony made the mistake of showing up on the farm, what, 40 something years ago? <laughs> And, and I needed somebody to help me. I was putting uh, trusses up on the warehouse here. So he came over with my friend, Jody Blue, and he's working for a nursery. And I said, hey, let me borrow Tony for a little bit. So Tony worked here, and he never left. And he's been captive here on the farm for all these years. So he knows where all the pipes are. He's the one that starts up the Eagles on a night that the power goes out. He packs 90% of the fish, if not 100%, 100%. And that's what he does. He, like yesterday, he was doing a lot of the rare stuff, the um, Plantosas. And right behind Glenn is our new um, Petrochromus. And they are outstanding. And we just got them in wild. I don't know. Petrom, uh maybe five months ago and conditioned him and I've we had maybe six babies on him and yesterday or the day before he checked them and there must be 50, 60 babies in there at least, don't you think? Yeah. All different sizes. That's incredible. These their little babies are green with little yellow spots. They're, they're like at the Boise, green to Boise with yellow spots. So I haven't had them probably in three or four years because I couldn't get any wild ones at my other ones. Uh, I unfortunately didn't put any babies in the way to grow up and they got old and that was it for them. But we'll be doing those next time. Tony thinks they're ready, we'll come out and do it. And then we've got our next Monday. Next Monday. We got our Chimba trophies here. We got our Langies over there. We got colas. So we'll be doing some of these trophies as we move along. We do we do the trophies kinda of all together except for the Langies. We keep it separate. They're, yeah, they're the um, they're known as the king of trophies. So anyway, we're about done here, and then Tony's going to take them in and sort them and put them in. Uh, he, you leave the babies in the buckets, like just water running on them. You don't put them in the incubator. You no, I don't need. No, they do, they grow so fast. Yeah. Do you ever use baby brine on the babies? On these guys, no. So anyway, that's that's how we do this. 
Clean and uh, I'm gonna take you in the warehouse in a minute we'll, and um, turn one of the pipes uh, where we put them, show you how they get into one pipe. And they're dated in the front so you can kind of get an idea how fast these guys go. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Let us know, subscribe, comment, and like it. I'm learning that. And I keep talking, blanks over there laughing. Okay, we're going inside. Hey, we're in the warehouse here. Um, I'm going to probably tell you what we're going to do because when we go back there, it gets louder and louder with this running water. We've got this running water. We've got an air pump going. So I'm going to show you a flower. I'm going to lift the flower pot up and put a baby net underneath. We call it baby net because it doesn't have, it's very teeny and they don't get stuck up in. I'll show you how they hang into the tank. cats right here they were done 731 so um we've got some down here that nine three we'll look at that too but watch it this this is a big old flower pot and hey, look at that they'll all go in there and they'll just i mean they're they're nuts over here these are from nine five look at this look at up, up top i don't know if you can see that but they're off their top. I'm gonna net them. This was nine five, so this was you know not too long ago. And again, they're, they all go in there. And we quit putting two in there because they won't go in there. They won't do it. So we don't waste their time. So what Tony does is every morning he comes in here and he drains out all the food and then he loads it back up. And when he does that. Maybe some morning we'll take a picture up with clearer glass because, like I said, this is a working farm. This is not. This is this, these glass tanks have been scrubbed. Uh, they've been scraped with razor blades. They've been so they over the years they get messed up. You can't see through. We're going to set up the tank with grainy glass and show you. But uh, he, he takes care of these things every morning. Drains you any food left over, fills it back up. These things are all day long. So anyway, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.